We are on to the second half of the Grand Finals. And... We... Let's keep this video going, I guess. I mean, there's no point taking a break. We're going to be going right into it. By the look of it. Yeah, they're probably already banning maps. I haven't gone back to the lobby quite yet. I need to reset the scores. Now that they're figuring out who's the highest seed. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe I'll leak. Uh, well, let me know when they got that sorted. I just... I need to rewrite some of this stuff. All right, where is the... Let's see what they are up to. Okay, they've sorted that out. And Zed is I the first to band. Because that's one all on Hourglass, so these teams are very even and huh. doing some interesting things. That's a fair point. Anyway, Zed has been banned, though, so Hourglass is definitely in the running. Where is the... Oh, there it is. Make sure they've got the thing marked, so... Okay, they figured it out. Banning Zed. Banning Izki. I. The Zed ban is uh, sort of expected. As is the Izki ban. Yeah. Ban Lonely. Uh, of course. Might these two teams just agree they want to decide this whole series on Hourglass? I mean, if they're just one match, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they're going to go in Hourglass multiple times, but we did see Hourglass twice they in the series. All. They are, that's true. With Zed being this weird sideshow. Yeah, I guess Anir and SNA may not want to fight that again. Well, we'll see. Because they won the first one. They did. And they lost the second one, so Reddy and Crowell figured something out. Well, I mean, the big difference between the two oh, matches... Yeah, but the big difference between the two matches is that in the second one, Cor Crow and Gorda immediately went to both corners. Mm. See, there was a break between the series, and Gorda and Crow could learn how to make a Geo. Which would up their win rate on Hourglass, I think. Yeah, that's possible. We're on Shimmer Shore or Hourglass. Those are our point. Those are our choices. So it's entirely up to Crow and Gota. Do they want to try Hourglass a third time, or do they want to go to Shimmer Shore? Yeah, I need a banding fire break. Nope, we're on Hourglass once again. All right, so we get to determine who wins on Hourglass. Well, they won one on Hourglass. It can be the decider. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully you all at home are not getting sick of Hourglass. It's kind of funny at the beginning of the tournament. I said, man, it'd be kind of neat to see some Hourglass maybe from time to time and felt like we weren't <laughs> going to see any. And now it's been three matches, almost three in a row. Like three matches out of the last four have been Hourglass. Well, Vantage, Firebreak, and only Oasis. Actually, I think all of these maps have been in the 1v1 pool at some point, but I think Zed was very early and quickly Oh, removed. it was the first one, and yeah, no one liked it. The only worst map Lonely is Sever. Lonely Oasis has a bit of a... It needs slightly more ramps. I reckon Lonely Oasis then could make a comeback if someone gave it a few more ramps. I think mm. Hourglass is sort of the most standard, you might say, 2v2 map here. It's got some size to it. It's got some hills. Vantage is an interesting points. knife fight in 2v2, but it is much. It's a knife fight, though. More That's the problem. A 1v1 size. Yeah. Okay, what are they going to try this time? God, it likes rovers. Okay. And Crow is a wild card, really. I mean, they've gone for air, they've gone for rovers, they've gone for hovercraft. Uh, is S name cheesing himself? Oh, maybe. No. Ooh, gunships. Who's the other? What's the other? Oh, gunships and rovers. That's not really a... Unless they're doing a ripper drop, I expect they're going to be doing something more like a giant locust push. Uh, 
I don't know. It could be cheese or it could be expansion. The thing is, gunships were nerfed for 1v1 because it was a bit of a, a bit of a rock, paper, scissors type thing depending on sort of how well your factory could deal with gunships. Right. The main, the main nerf was making their constructor heavier and slower. So it's an okay constructor for some other situations, but expanding in a 1v1, if you, all you can expand with is with a heavy, slow constructor, you've got a bit of a problem. Well, they are definitely but, going for that. But in a 2v2, you've got your ally to expand. You've got a land factory. Right. So, so the main disadvantage, and Gunships was started, I think. You could start it on Hourglass sometimes. I think some other things have changed since then. Hmm. And on, um, like, Mech and Sonia. Well, yeah, but Mech and Sonia just became spider versus spider, and, like, a proxy versus spiders. Yeah, yeah, or Mech's occasionally gunship. Yeah, a bit of that problem. But, yeah, I'm saying the main disadvantage of gunships was it's sort of removed by 2v2, if you play it right. That's true. So they could get something out of it. And having Scorcher is quite good. You can... If you fly some gnats around with some Scorchers, the Scorchers can just, like, win Raider fights as what they attack is a, a stunned. Yeah. If you get three gnats onto a commander and send some Scorchers in, the commander mm -hmm. dies pretty cheaply. Very true, but the problem, of course, is the matter of cost and also the Locust has been spotted, so we should be seeing some anti-air pretty soon. Yeah. Nat is quite cheap, though. That's true. Nat is quite cheap. It's, it's Locust that has trouble with efficiency Maybe. as a raider. True. Locust being Did the fastest oh. and nice most all-terrain raider has trouble with actually being cost-effective. That seems fair, though, because otherwise it would yes. be broken. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, there's 220 each, so. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it makes itself back just in Lotus. Often does, yeah. Looks like we are indeed. Build, if you have to build no turrets, you can make some money back. Yep. Oh, and nice. Got rid of, a, got rid of an early mason on Golda's side. Yeah, although that happened last game, so... It did. This is now a god but... game. <laughs> I mean, it did, History. but at the same time, there wasn't as much raiding going on on top of that, which this time there absolutely is. Uh, there's almost a, a Locust's worth of wind generators being taken out. Yep. One of those Locusts paid if for another itself. another Mason goes down, that'd be huge, but the Scorchers are making that difficult. Oh, yeah, another mason? That's really... no, not going to go down. That's, that's, that'll live. That'll live. That forces you, you a retreat. Can't, you can't exactly fight into raiders with locust, but you can cause the, lo the raiders to be in just terrible locations. Yeah. So, okay, they can't get out. The scorches are going to be able to come in from from a near. Sinone can move back with the locusts. They've done their job. Yeah. Wasp has come up as well. Have... Build up a few more attack elsewhere. Yep. Yeah, one wasp. It costs 300. Yeah, which is and like... And it's only got 7.5. So it's like... Well, it's one and a half times most constructors, isn't it? Like, most constructors are in the 150 to 200 range. Yeah. It's like a speedy welder that can't shoot. Yeah. And also can fly, which, you know, all terrains. Certainly not nothing on this map where you can just go up a hill and live. I mean, that's why these locusts are still in the game. Yes. Is that hill? Although air units don't have um, sight shadows, so some AA near a cliff will kill them. Oh yeah, fair enough. But when it comes to scorchers, that's absolutely the way to go. Yes, as long as you don't run the locusts into the scorchers. Speaking like... of, yeah, that's Ooh. definitely a problem. Oh man, they still survived though. Same time though, we have a bunch of scorchers over to the south taking out some expansions. There's no defense. Oh, my, Crow's factory's dead. Ooh, can they kill the ogre though? Yeah, seven that... seconds. No, that ogre's done. Oh, whoa! Yes, they. Okay, they still got it though. It's it bought enough they time. Up a bit. It bought enough time I, though. I can a scorcher kill a welder? Not when it's retreating. Ooh, that was close. That was so yeah, close. 
And he had to spread his scorches and put them on hold position so they stayed there. That would have been the only way. Yeah. Oh, and Asana's oh, commander is going to go down. Probably dying. Oh, that is bad. Mumble Clan There's still ahead in economy, but I don't know. That's not going to last too long. Again, the corners have been taken by Golda and Crow. Yeah. They're just taking the corners slowly with load with um, LLTs. Just to protect against all the locusts. Although I could mumble clan will become a head on economy. And they are ahead on economy now, oh, that's oh, the thing. Up and Geo. Yeah, they're up they're up a Moho, they're up a or once they get up a Moho. They are definitely up a a bunch of metal extractors. That is the matter. Yeah. But the point is that they're up the metal extractors. Left, bottom left is unmixed though. So oh that's yeah. That's why point. that's why Southwest I thanks for pointing that out. That's Thinking, why is Southwest? They have the same map control. Why are they falling apart? Like, oh yeah. Also, I just realized this is the first time this map's really split diagonally. That's a new one. Yeah. So kind of makes sense now that I think about it. So he's got nine locusts. What do you want to do with that? That's two thousand metal. That's uh, two thousand metal. That's four hundred fifty DPS. He can come in and kill turrets, but. A crasher will sort of dissuade them. Yeah, but if it comes in and kills a turret, and then Anir comes in with their ground forces and cleans up, that's worth that's worth a lot. Actually, even more lo locusts continue to be built. That was surprisingly honestly. I would honestly. like to see a few nats earlier on. Maybe you could kill a commander with it. Or just in general as a way of providing extra support, being more efficient. Yeah. Because I mean, a commander, okay, fine, but the nat, the nat random fire chain, uh, or the fact that they're, they don't, they're not perfectly accurate, not the best thing for yeah, commander. But against a bunch of scorchers, against a bunch of scorchers, though, that inaccuracy is actually a good thing, or at least yes. it works out okay because it hits all of them kind of evenly. You can't really use nat against raiders that well, as in it's not going to, you're not going to be able to send nat and locust in and beat raiders. But with other raiders, you know, raiders that aren't as inefficient as Locust, right. it becomes a possibility. Or just use Harpies and hit and run. Okay. Crow's factory could die now. Yeah, it's not being attacked, though. Golda's factory is the main focus on oh. these Locusts, which is honestly it's a mistake. Locusts here. These Locusts could go down and kill that factory. Yeah, right. I don't know why they're not. I think they might not be. What's, what's the current... Oops. Current state they of vision. Bit... They have no vision yeah, of the yeah, area. Yeah, there's just they no vision of the area. There's no. Yeah, especially with losing the north side, they're clearly underconfident with that. There's a lot of investment in these locusts now. Honestly, I'm not sure how to feel about that, because there's a lot of investment, but only a handful have died, so it's been relatively efficient. I wonder if Harpy's any good. I think Harpy Harp is. Harpy hasn't been changed, but things might have changed around it. I think Harpy's been slept on, honestly. It's really quite good as like a semi raider, a semi riot. Mm -hmm. You put it with your own units, and then it slows down an enemy raider, and you can just pick them off. It's like a skirmisher, which is as fast as raiders. Yeah. So it forces the raiders to do something. Okay, this is interesting. Locust and a whole bunch of Fencer. Okay, they've got to be realizing that they can kill this factory now. Well, uh, maybe. The Fencers move in. The Fencers have to move in, though. The Scorchers are going to be a major problem. Otherwise, why are the Fencers not moving in? Anir, why are you letting your teammate out to, leaving your teammate out to dry? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. The Scorchers are forced to retreat. Scorchers decided it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Uh, the locust got to be like, careful there. Why isn't he not going in? Maybe he wants to avoid getting killed by death explosion. Well, uh, that's what... To... I mean, that's actually a sign that he wants to avoid that. That's why they're not killing it. They're saying defenses uh, can yes, go true. in and do that. But, yeah, okay, now it's going to down. Do the dirty work. Yeah. Get exploded. There oh, we no. go. Now all the locusts are pretty damaged, though. They are, but there's nothing to stop them. There's 10 metal per second health. right here in the southwest. And that's a resign. There it is. Locusts yep. take it. So, so far, on Hourglass, it's 2-1 to one for Mumble Clan.
have they solved Hourglass? Remembering that Locust was good 1v1 before Wasp got a bit of a change. Well, if we see it in game three, we'll know for sure. Well, if they decided they've solved it, then they might even try to not play it again. Well, I mean, they can't. Guardian Crow can always ban it. Yeah, but if Golden Crow, Crow don't ban it, then it can't be picked either way. Unless I miss something. Not next, but for the third game, if there's a third game. Yeah, there's a third game, yeah, it could be picked. Alright, so... That... Yeah, army value, S and A, and just built up locusts. Had to do so very carefully. It's tempting to use those early locusts on things they can't quite do and just lose a f one or two against raiders or turrets and then wouldn't work out. Yeah, it's a tricky thing to do. I think they'd be... I had to be careful about that. I don't know. Okay, so our glass is soft band for this band phase. Right. Actually, I gotta get some water. Be right back. All right. So hourglass is out. Zed is also out. Waiting on. What? Okay, so now we've lost Hourglass and Zed. Well, kind of lost Hourglass. So we could... Like, from here, what can we see? Hourglass, we have Zed, we have... Advantage seems like a likely third pick. But hey, we're going to see something other than those two. Hourglass and Zed, that is. So with that, it's Lonely Oasis out as well, leaving the two C maps and okay, Firebreak's been banned. So Vantage will likely be the map we play on. I mean, if they go for a non-cheese strat on Vantage, they might have a chance. Oh, it's like Gomin and Bakuhatsu. Well, yeah, if if Anir and, and Sun and I don't make the same mistake as Gomin and Bakuhatsu, or at least do it without dying, but then... Oh, sorry. Not that. His cube is banned. Shimmer and Vantage are the remaining maps. Hello. And, hey, so Shimmer Shore and Vantage... Bad. Although Anir has explicitly banned Hourglass. Because he doesn't want to play against... Yeah, there you go. It's the, it's the format. So they weren't allowed to pick Hourglass. But they also don't want God and Crow to do it. But God and Crow can't do it, I don't think. Because, no, Anir gets the last one. But it is going to be Shimmer Shore we're playing on. At least I think, I don't know, this this rule is weird. I thought I had worked out how it worked in practice, but honestly, just it just should be changed to you can't play the same map twice in the same series. That would certainly make sense. And be a lot easier to figure out. Jimmy Shaw, so this could be the last game. This could be, yes. And you're in win. Yeah, and you're in a Saturday, if they take this, will have won the tournament. Go to and Crow have to win this and the third game if they want to take the tournament themselves, which, I mean, they would eh, have a pretty good showing. So, I don't know. And the last time we saw them on C, it w I don't know. Oof. Last time we saw Gota and Crow on C, it was their first match with the Gamana and Bakahatsu. And that was when they went for planes and ships and tried to hide bombers. And it worked, but they were basically running 1v2 for a while. 
And I don't know if that'll work against a near and assignment mm -hmm. if they try that. I I seriously doubt it. I think we'll see ships from both sides. That's my theory. Well, yeah, but it's the support factor that counts. Yeah. Unless you think unless you're thinking double ships. Not double ships. There's no point in having double ships. No, because plates, plates, yeah. And you can always just if you don't want to spend the 150, you can assist your partner's factory. But what if double ships though? Hmm. Or one ship and you hold a plop and then you have a free factory a few minutes into a game actually that could happen people could be doing that for any map yeah they could actually but, just assist build for a while I don't know or use a plate but can you build a plate when you have a plop variety, available yeah okay building you, you know that? building a variety of raiders to support each other in the early games pretty good though yep Anyway, Crow and Gota are good. going for the, the combo they went for last time in Shimmer Shore. And yeah, makes some sense. Anir and Asanane, they've got ships. Anir, what are they going for? Go over hovers. And hover. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know, we haven't seen enough 2v2 ship. Like, 2v2 is hard at the best of times. Who knows what factories are good together where? In the sea... You can pretty much say there should be a ships, but otherwise, I mean, just don't use like tanks, I guess. Yeah. Otherwise, make sure you're not landlocked. <laughs> pretty much. So with that, we are probably looking at okay ravens again. So it definitely is going to be a mass raven build into probably a comm snipe or a factory snipe. Is it hidden raven? Yes, that was the way well, they played last these, time. These two could be... They, they might have seen it. They were playing their own game. That being said, the fact that it's hovercraft, I don't I don't think it's going to be easy to hide. Because before it was Anf button ship. That like I went on back of yeah. we were playing. And Whereas hover's more of a dagger can be quite a scout in C. Exactly. And there there weren't even any ducks built in the Anf bot factory. It was archers and then a few boys later on. It and bulkheads. It was never used for scouting. Also, they never built cutters. That's another change. So, we're seeing Mumble Clan go heavily on the scouting to try to figure out what is going on. Well, building cutter is the way of uh, spotting someone who sort of knows what's going on in C. Because you get scouting, and with a, with several cutter, you can like run in and disarm stuff. Right. If you have enough cutter, you can run in and disarm a Corsair, and then whale is you can't kill it fast enough or it runs away to safety. Sure, but... Or uh, kill but, it with a hunter. Yeah, but what it comes down to ultimately, in this case... The planes was oh, scouted. Planes them. was spotted! Okay, that is a raven scout. And that was sound effect scouted as well. Yep. In the case you didn't see. Well, see a flail. Uh, there's there's the reaction. Yep, I like it. Reaction flare. Oh, that's That's 300. That's... Slightly more than they've paved the ravens. So no, it's the, the same. So far. It's, it's going to be 600 total. Uh, crows, are, crows are three ravens. Mm. Killed a bolus. Not a bad shot. Oh, it didn't quite disarm, but that's fine. It's not going to find any targets. The flail is up, however. The time has been bought. So this should work out... Just disarm the raven, why not? That's the least likely way to get a shot off, is by chasing cutters. I don't know. It's it's sometimes interesting to watch, because it is, like, there's the skill difference, of course, so it's interesting to see, like, how different people approach it. Different levels of skill. Also, flail. Also, oh, shoot. Oh, commander. That commander is looking bad. Cutter's at least saving the day, but still. Yeah. A few more hunter shots, and that would have killed it. Oh, more hunters coming in. Uh, Claymore? 
This is this it, this is when you get claymore. Nah, it's gonna make it to the land. Then there'll be trouble. Oh no, it's gonna Ooh. live long enough. There's the raven. Nope, the raven comes in. Oh, that's raven. Ah, oh, just got it. See, they've, they've, they've traded three ravens now for a commander and a few hunters. And they had to build two flails. Yeah. So I think. I think it's hard to actually counter air in 1v1, in 2v2 or. Really, it's hard to actually counter air, but they've given up on having land forces. Right. That's essentially what you do. You don't get hard countered early. You just miss out on the chance to have land forces, or sea forces, as the case may be. Well, it's, it's the water land. But what I would do now is probably stop making so much air. Stop. Ceasing air when your opponent has a bit too much AA for you. And then restarting and they give up on it. I... Yeah, I'm not seeing well. that. I think Crow... I I haven't really seen Crow pivot away from a factory very quickly. I don't expect to have yeah. a see, see a change until 10-15 minutes into the game. But he's expanding heavily. So he's also spending a lot of his resource in a sense on that. That's true. and That's a good expenditure. And look, here's this army, this army from Ania. It costs a thousand, but it's only got two bolus in it, and the rest is flails. Right. I mean, there's a Corsair providing some support, but it's not much. Yeah, the Corsair's coming in. Uh, they can probably beat those hunters now with that. Two Corsairs for sure. Siren coming in. Bulls won't die, though. Oh, died? Really? I thought Bulls had 1200 HP. Eh, whatever. 1200? No. No, 700. My bad. I'm thinking of something else. Thinking of. Blitz, maybe? I think I am no, thinking of Blitz. You have to be heavier than a bolus to survive a raven. See, these ravens are making money. Kill they the are. Bolus, kill the Corsair, just, just pick it off. Oh, yeah, this thing, like, Crow does have that pretty well understood. Like, the value killed for value lost for Crow is positive. That's... Let's now see. Send in hunters and yep. kill off these flails. It's also a bit of an attention train. You know, you've got to keep your AA sort of close to your army, but not so close it can't do anything. But also not die to just being picked off. Mm -hmm. Ah, this rude metal extractor is sitting on a bit of an island. Very rude for those hunters. <laughs> Yeah, it's not much of an island. It's pretty shallow. It's tidal, but... Oh, does Axel or Axel just get killed? Yeah, it's not going to matter. I mean, the I flail's see. still there, and the ravens are still being torn apart, and the siren's nice support. But that flail... Where's that flail going? That it's flail's got a death wish. To uh, scouting out the enemy. Sure, let's go with that. It seems like a death wish, but I guess it works out. Mumble Clan, though, falling behind, and... Map control, though. Gorda. I think Gorda, I think it's just been Raven and Hunter so far. Yep. From Southwest. Which, you know, if they use the units well, have a plan behind it. Which they clearly do. I mean, it's just been, you know, Hunter to try to hold back boluses or any other forces to come in. Ravens to pick off valuable targets while they expand in the meantime. I expect to see Siren switch just about now, actually. Uh, we've got an Envoy, but there's no defenses. Yeah. Envoy is also quite good against heavy, heavier ships. I'm supposed to be not seeing more range. Corsairs and Maces. Or Claymores, because Claymores kill ships. I know this is anti-sub, but I'm pretty yeah. sure it works against surface ships as well. Claymore is risky because it has changed recently. It was buffed recently, but who knows exactly how it works. I well, you do, presumably. Probably work. Uh, how's it work in real games? Oh, I see. Yeah, fair enough. I thought you meant, like, how the actual mechanics function. Oh, yeah. On C, it's very simple. It just shoots a torpedo projectile that goes off and hits a thing. Yeah. The thing dies. Ah, uh, Sinone's commander is live. It survived. For now. It, it dodged a shot. There's a scar on the ground where it dodged. So it yeah. The jump. Bringing in more flails to stop that. Good plan. I, mean, I that's think Asmarine's gone a bit heavy. He's going 
three sirens, which will become a problem for God A, because you can't really attack those with hunters when there's support. Yeah, but and they have all the mat metal. They may lose the map before they can actually make a a push with it. And if you try and push with sirens a bit early, you would get surrounded and killed. So there's an envoy coming in. There is, and there's a lot of bullets as a support. So something. But what's the envoy going to kill? I mean, I guess it killed that island expansion. That's not a bad thing, but... Kill the urchin. That's true. Which they haven't got any radar on, so it'll take a bit, do a bit of damage before they do so. But that's a yeah, good combo. This two thousand in ships can do something. Ah, there you go. Got a switching into into some misrule. Yep. To counter uh, the siren. Put some damage on the siren. The envoy can shoot them, of course, if the envoy had any vision, but it doesn't. Yep. Oh, and the envoy's dead. The envoy was. Yeah. The envoy is the problem. The solution is ravens. So now we've got five siren. It's not bad. It's just not really being used. Well, they siren's got to be scared of raven. It can't shoot up. That's true. And the flails are not being efficient Maybe enough for the group. At angles to support each other, they get ravened. Right, that's not quite the same. Ugh, and the bulls just cannot deal with hunters. No. As ships, they are inherently more powerful. I wonder if I wonder if Anir is thinking that they're supposed to be using them like right like light riot units. Because that's a tempting thing to use them for, but. It's not working. It sort of can be in uh, on land. Sort of, there. yeah. Slow-ish, but not quite. But they're not as cost-effective as Mace, or as cost-effective as Claymore on the sea, presumably. I don't think Mace has much, much chance on sea. Really? I mean, I, more on defense, I mean, if the hunters were to come towards it. Mace is quite slow in a big open sea, compared That's true. to yeah. ships that are inherently powerful for being ships. Well, at any rate, Siren's able to finally get close. Though, again, no anti-air. Flails are at least in position to avoid the factory getting killed. Kill the factory. Oh, no, the factory's dead. There's no stopping it. Oh, what? No, there is. The stopping it is that it didn't hit... Uh, okay, what? Yeah, they targeted the unit in the factory. Okay, that that saved it. Uh, so, just ah, a bit of no, just no, a no. Bit of no. No, that factory's dead. The hunters have got it. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be a it for this map. Yeah. Planes is quite good. Now, I'm not really sure what you do. And against Siren. That. Hmm. Maybe, Zephyrs, maybe, maybe? SMAs heard the talk around um, Sparkle's Reef. The, you know, the map where you make Siren. Yeah. But Sparkle's Reef. It's very closed in. It's very sort of fjordy, I guess. Yeah, you can take advantage of the fact that the sirens are, have splash damage or just have a lot of yeah. really powerful attacks. You have a siren short range attacking matter. down a... A siren attacking down a path in uh, Spartan's Reef. Can't be surrounded by stuff. You just move them in. Mm -hmm. You have to actually get real force to stop them rather than just the risk of being out of position. Right. Although, this might turn around? I mean, the... I don't know. Well, they can kill... The ravens can kill a few of these. Yeah. The envoy is going to be dealing some damage Mama too. Mama has no factories and no commanders. Well, this is a Hail Mary pass. Like, they're, they are absolutely... Yeah. This is it. This is all they have. They're going to try to break the base, buy themselves some time to rebuild. Yeah. But even, even if this entire base exploded... Uh, maybe Mumble Clan would be in an okay position if the entire base exploded. Yeah, they're rebuilding the hover factory at least. Yeah. If I was southwest, I would be building a factory. I would just be taking a commander, building a factory, because you may as well. Yeah. That doesn't matter though. There's the resign. And we are moving on to map three, which can be hourglass. Yes. Just for the it can record. Be any map. 
Uh, not Shimmer Shore. Can't be Shimmer Shore. Uh, oh, you're right, because they would choose. Yeah, it can't be Shimmer Shore. Could be... Uh, could be Ziki. It's key, yeah, maybe. If you want to play a fancier version of Shimmer Shore. But I think that it's doesn't allow for the air cheese, and that's the only reason I think this is being played. And that's getting that is what's getting all that work done. Well, anyway, let's continue. Let's see what happens. Oh, right. I should point out Shimmer Shore is not valid, so we don't have to think about that map anymore for the rest of the tournament this week. Can't speak for next week, though. I expect the map tool is going to be very different, because I think this is the 1-2v2 week. Yeah, although, haven't some of these been in the 1v1? I think Vantage will have been in the 1v1 pool at some point. Vantage, well, yeah, Vantage will. Is, I think, was, but a lot of them have changed. Although, honestly, yep. they are 1v1 maps, so I don't know why we haven't seen them more. Maybe we will see the same set or some of the same maps next week. Alright, well, Hourglass has been banned. We are not getting Hourglass a final time. Banning yes, uh, out. Ban Hourglass from Crow. So they've decided that um Mumble Clan can win Hourglass. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, then... Lonely Oasis. Yep. Hourglass. Z. Ooh, fire. They might. We might. Oh, no, fire's out. Go back to Zed. Ooh, that's true. Zed or Vantage. It's one of the two. And here in S9 have seen how Gotta and Crow play Zed. But can they do anything about it? I'm surprised they didn't ban Zed right then and there. Well, no, they can't. They banned fire. They just don't like fire break. I guess maybe well, the devil you know. <laughs> because fire break. Oh. The bases are pretty close together on fire break. Yep. But the middle is watery and there's no mexes in it. So when I've played in 1v1 at least, you sort of tend to expand down your side of the island, your side of the peninsula, and then try and push into your opponent's side instead of really pushing to the center. Because you've got to push up hills to go. You can have the center, but to do anything with it, you have to push up a hill into their right. base. Right, so yeah, it's one of those so types it's, of maps. It's a safer... It's Yeah, you could go for right for the base, but it's hard, so you want to attack around the side, which, you know, it's interesting. It's not quite yeah. Zed, where it's flat, and you just push in. Yeah, it's like the upside-down cake map. Where a cake map is the opposite, where you have hills in the middle. Cake map. Hmm? What, Cooper Hill? That, that would be. I'm just thinking, because, like, a cake... Sorry, it's a term... I don't know why I brought that up. It's a term from, I think it was Superman Night Combat. The guys who made Planetary Annihilation in the game that they made beforehand, they mentioned this idea of map design called... We have some maps that have, like, hills in the center, so taking the center is kind of hard, but then going yeah. from there is easy. And the opposite, I guess, would just be an upside-down cake? I can't remember what they called the opposite. Taking the center is harder, there's a hill in the middle. Like, something like Living Lands would be an example of a cake map. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, that you know, different games, but I think if there's a hill in the middle, it means that... Taking the center is hard, but someone has the center. Yeah, and then Whereas going out from the center the, is easy. If it's like Vantage with a valley, 
you can take the center, but you don't really want to. Right. Well, anyway, jumping tanks for northeast for Crow and Golda, San and going and and you're going for rovers and jumps. Same thing. Yep. Rovers and jumps. Rovers and jumps. No, we're Why rover? Last time? I know. It's same for Gotti and Crow. Yeah, it's not Do the same for Nier and Sanane. Nier and Sanane were spiders and shields before. Yes. Spiders and shields. So they're thinking... They like jumps. Liked what Gotti did with the jumps. But they think that Rover beats whatever happens with the tank. It looks like... Early Pyro too, not even early Puppy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I said before, Dart... Dart and Scorcher together do a good job against single mod or single Kodachis. You play it right. But you gotta be careful. Not sure if it's being played right at the moment. I don't think so. Like the Dart's be getting a hit that allows the Scorcher to come in afterwards. Yeah, this isn't uh, working at all. Oh, Ooh, no shoot. Hit. Oof, no, that didn't work at all. They kind of need to both come in at once, otherwise the code will kill one or the other. Yeah, save the mason though, I think. Yep. Yeah, the mason will be fine. Coda will go down eventually, but that's that's at great cost. That that coda made cost. Barely, but it did. Same time pyro in here. Oh, the welders. Killing having a welder. Hard time. There's no way out of it. Uh, the that welder's dead. dead. That welder is indeed dead. Burned to death. Pyro absolutely made cost. Much more valuable there. So good setup for our near and assignment. Eh? But what is going on with this rover? Rover can't go anywhere. It's got the restricted vehicle pathing on this map. Yep. So they hmm. think that Impaler beats Emissary. They must do. But they're not even focusing on that right now. They're trying to get before. jump bots up. Fence is quite a nice early uh, thing to build. Yeah. Unless they were thinking... I don't know. Ravager wouldn't really help, though. I don't know. No. Ravager wants space. Although SNA yeah. does use quite a bit of Rover, so maybe she wants to do it. Could be. Ripper, yeah. Ripper Fencer, like as has been typical. Is. Yep. Uh, I think there's space for pirate for for ravages in general. But not so much in this map. No, if they could use the ramps it'd be different, but they can't. Yeah, but S9 likes to do the thing which seems good here, so. Yeah, Fencer River. It. This pyro is gonna get a surprise. Oh wait, no. That's the friendly pyro. That's an allied pyro. Yeah. These That's an ears pyro. Surprise. Well, you're gonna jump right on top of the con of the constable. That's not gonna be good. Uh, dead constable. Moderator is also probably dead. dead. Oh, that's that's value right there. Pyro will go down though, so at least that's something. Constable. But oh. Ooh, getting a lot of wind generates on fire. That'll be fine. That'll die. be fine. Nah, the constable's fine. It'll be at like 50 HP. Yeah, 51 HP. Wow, called it! But I called it! I didn't expect it to be that close. Here is the emissary being built up. Yeah, well... Pyros are showing about how bad they are against Lotus. I'm surprised they went for the Lotus. They can jump around that. Go around another well, path. they jumped up the ramp. No, but I mean, they could jump over the sea and then go up above that. Ah, and yes. that ramp. And you wouldn't. Yep. And also be easier to support from the mid-ground. Like, the reinforcements could, could come in from the center. Because then if, so, you, if you make that work, then you can cut it, any off, reinforcements off to the northwest and kill them there. But it's it's harder to pull off, though. All grand. I think Crown got us slightly behind where they were last time this happened. They haven't quite taken all of their metal extractors. Yeah. They haven't raided in so well. They have got themselves their Stinger and their Ogre. 
step one and two in the plan. And then Emissary is being built up. Don't see what Mumble Clan is. Oh, yeah, Mumble Clan is going for the Impaler. But Mumble Clan has a lot more room to work with the Impaler, though. Last time they got the Impaler, there were a dozen emissaries to deal with. Now yes, there's Impaler and one. Firewalker. I'm not so sure about Firewalker. I. If you have an Impaler, uh, you can already kill off all the static defenses. And a I, Firewalker's got quite uh, short range. The only thing I can think of is they might be thinking about the fact that they were trying to do some bombs before with Cloak. A firewalker would get rid of screening units. That was. Mumble Clan that was doing the bombs. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, also, it's Mumble Clan doing no the bombs, yeah. If Mumble Clan had the bombs and came in with the Firewalker. Or even the bombs. Okay, the Impaler is doing its job. Quite nicely, too. You guys have a nice metal extract kill. The Northeast still looking pretty strong. Our Pyro raid coming in from the corner. Oh. Now we finally see some dynamism on this map with the pyro rates coming around the side. It takes jump jets to get anywhere here. Yeah, and this is the first time we've seen both sides use jump jets. I suppose if the Impaler kills off the defenses, because you can't attack into the emissary usually, you know, if you just have right. a little bit standard on army because a few stingers are uh, made around it. But if the Impaler does enough, Well, yeah, I mean, it also, it thins out the opposing force, much like the Emissary. So if you make that work, then, yeah, you can actually do a lot of damage. Any more Impalers coming in? No, just sort of general army. I'm sure what the Firewalker's doing, though. It's getting yeah. very close. Yeah. It... Got a assisting the Emissary production. They're going pure Emissary. I don't think it'll work out for them. They no, MSA, no. The, the counters are already up. It's, it's not like last time where they pulled it out of a really strong assault position. This is coming out from the start, and the stinger's going to go down in one more, one more impaler shot. I think is happening right now. Yes, there it is. Yep, that's dead stinger. So with that, there's not a whole lot defending this. Firewalker's going to be able to push in, and the center's not going to hold for northeast. Well. Probably not. Not with emissaries. Not against defensers and rippers. Ah, uh, there, there are a lot of fences, yes. Yeah, there's just too much, too many assault forces and skirmishers that can just counter this. As you can see already, there's the retreat. Pyro coming around the side. I'm in the retreat. Are they going to stop all the emissaries, though? Uh, switching the ogres. Good call. I like it. Not Pyro sure it's, it's in time. Ogre, though. Yeah, I just don't know if it's in time, though. That's the one thing. They've got themselves... Ah, uh, four emissaries slowly packing up and moving. Three. Away. One of them. One of them just got killed. Yep. Yeah. Another one coming in, but it's too close. Yeah, and that ogre. I don't know. Nice use of moderators. Actually, got rid of the ogre immediately. Now this looks like it's it. This is. The emissaries are the only things defending. The units are actually kind of clumped up. The emissaries could do. Quite a bit more work than I would normally expect. But even given that, this is not looking strong. Another ogre yes, goes down. Also, ooh, they have been they thin thinned out. They have been thinned out, but it's just not like they're still getting reinforcements. They have an economic advantage. They have the, the emissaries are being killed off. Yeah, the emissaries are being killed uh, off. That's the main nice thing. Nice yeah, that'll thinking. finish it off. Yeah, both commanders. Well, that's got to be game that. Now. I can't imagine they're having to come back plans. Now, crows throwing in the towel. Looks like it's up to Gorda whether they think they can pull this out. I seriously doubt it, and so do they. That is it. Mumble Clan taking the tournament. Actually, whole thing, start to finish. Yep, they found a solution to that particular strategy because it worked. MSRE worked so well last time, they expected it to happen again. Yeah, and it happened a lot sooner this time than it did last time. So the, they didn't have as much support on the emissary. Which honestly, I think, is, yes, that was kind of... an for it hard. They did, and I don't think... That it, also, last time it was against spiders and shields, which didn't really have a lot of ways of getting in, but against jump bots... Like, yes, that's they not got raided. Work. Yeah, they got raided too often. 
slowed them down a bit as well. Mm -hmm. Marvel Clan last time tried for a strong, solid push in the middle to try and get an early advantage, but it was not fast enough to stop it being bogged down and then emissaries, whereas here, they raided around the sides and then had a quick plan for dealing with the escalation before it happened. Right, and they did exactly that and pulled it off. Yep. Well, that was that was really cool. I mean, for a map that I didn't wasn't sure would work out that well, especially after the last last match. Oops, that's not right. Especially it's very after the last a, match. It's very much of a maybe a one trick map. You you start off. You try doing your trick. If it works, then you're good. And if it doesn't work, it gets bogged down, and now it's up to whoever thinks of a trick next. Yeah. Not a trick, but like a composition. Well, yeah, something that breaks through the center. Because that's always yeah. the key thing. If you can break through the center, then you're good. If you can't break through the center, then you're going to have a very hard time. Yeah, and the lines just sort of solidify and you figure it out. You can go around the sides. You know, spiders and jumps can work pretty well. As we did see. But you yeah, do lose true. a lot of forces from the center if you try that. So mostly it's probably the center. Yeah, I, I expect we're going to be seeing very little of this map going forward. I expect we're not going to get in the next pool. Like, if we do, we're probably going to see a lot of it, but it's just, I think it's, I, I, I feel like it's not going to be kept in. Makes for a relatively short uh, game. It was, like, the third favorite map, fourth favorite map, maybe. Was it really? I'm not sure. Zed? I watched everything. Oh, in this tournament, yeah, probably. Yeah, in the, sorry, in this tournament, out of the seven. Yeah, Hourglass is probably the favorite, then, although Hourglass is mostly favorite because of the first Grand Finals. <laughs> Four, four matches out of six. That certainly helps. As for Zed, I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. I think Shimmer Shore might be second, maybe third. Zed's third or fourth, I think. My guess, I think the way I saw it, it looks like it was Hourglass. Hourglass, Vantage, Zed, Shimmer Shore, in that order. If I, I think that's my guess. Judging by what that I saw. Stands about right. Well, anyway, that is that. So thank you to or thank you for helping me co-cast. Congratulations to Gota and sorry, to Anir and Simone. Congratulations to Golden and Crow on your silver medal. Congratulations to Anir and Simone for winning the tournament. And congratulations to the Glamon and Bakahatsu for getting a solid third place. And also, you know, honorable mention to Penwin and Saber, who hadn't really shown up before, and Actually, neither did near a sign but still, Penwin and Saber haven't seen them before ever. I just rock into fourth place. Some pretty solid matches, too. Yeah, pretty impressive. So, with that. Someone said, uh, good game to Mumble Clan. Mumble Clan did have two. They yeah, saw so a good showing by Mumble Clan as well. Yep. Yeah, but near and a sign and a, and. Who's the other one? No, I wouldn't have been Steel Blue, would have been. KT and Chum Toad. Oh, okay, yeah, no, they, they got knocked out. They got they went one two right off the bat. Okay. So they we didn't get a chance to see them. But yeah, with so yeah, then so thank you to all your players for participating, especially the ones who hadn't before. Thanks for joining. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to or sorry, thank you Google Frog for co-commentating. And thanks you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.